Happy Halloween, everybody. And what better time to dive into the Halloween series featuring the iconic slasher himself, Michael Myers. Uh, no, uh, close. The paler, less Canadian Michael Myers. Although the other one can be scary as well. So the movie starts off in Haddonfield, Illinois on Halloween night in 1963. And we see the point of view of Michael Myers himself as he spies on his sister making out with someone. I know that sounds creepy, but just keep in mind it's the 60s. There's still a good 10 years before Hugh Hefner gets his feet off the ground. So the two sinful teenagers go upstairs, and about a minute later they're done. That was a quick game of patty cake. That's the most penetration she got all night. <laughs> His parents later find him outside. Michael? Did you stab your sister again? Two hours later. It then cuts to the year 1978, the day before Halloween. We see Michael's psychiatrist, Dr. Loomis, and some nurse going to a hospital to pick up Michael for a court hearing. As they approach the hospital, they see some escaped patients wandering around outside. Since when did they let them wander around? Oh, you know, around the same time they allowed them to have sharp objects. I really hope you're not the main character. So when Dr. Loomis leaves to get help, Michael attacks. Uh, he broke the window. That's no reason for you to abandon the car. Are you alright? You're alright? Yes, I'm okay. He's gone. He's gone from here. The evil is gone. Yes, the evil is gone, but the dumb blonde remains. You know all the people that die in these movies? Guess whose fault? Hers. And people wonder why women get paid 70 cents for every dollar a man makes? So the very next day on Halloween, we're back in Michael's hometown, and we meet Laurie Strode, who, on her way to school, is unknowingly stalked by Mr. Myers. But wait a minute, with Michael being locked up since he was a child, how did he know how to drive? Sam Haddonfield is 150 miles away from here now. Now, for God's sakes, he can't drive a car. He was doing very well last night. Maybe someone around here gave him lessons. Don't you love it when a movie acknowledges a question but doesn't answer it? Lori eventually catches Peeping Tom Myers outside her class window. She also sees him on her way home. Hey, isn't that Devon Graham? I don't think so. I think he's cute. And eventually in a less subtle spot, followed by an intelligent vanishing strategy. The cloak is online and ready to begin phase sequencing. Activating power systems. Report. The cloak appears to be functioning normally. Oh, look. Look where? Behind the bush. Hey, creep. Lori, dear. He wants to talk to you. He was standing right there. Poor Lori. Scared another one away. It's tragic. You never go out. You must have a small fortune stashed from babysitting so much. Guys think I'm too smart. Oh yeah, yeah, it's not because of the way you dress. That's for sure, it's because you're too smart. She goes home, looks out the window, and you'll never guess what she sees. Uh, what? Did he just jump in the bushes? So as Dr. Loomis makes his way back to Haddonfield, he very coincidentally stumbles across an unclothed trucker Michael killed, and for some reason he pays a visit to the grave of Michael's sister. Why do they do it? Those graves are... Oh, I know. 18, 19... 20, 19. Judith Myers. So in one night, Michael somehow taught himself to drive, he somehow knew his way back to Haddonfield, he somehow knew where Haddonfield graveyard was, and somehow knew where his sister's grave was. Oh, and he also killed a man for his clothes, broke into his store to steal a mask and some knives, and dug out his sister's tombstone, carried it away by himself, and then went home and began his very theatrical stalking. 
Apparently the car he stole contained five Red Bulls, a GPS, and anabolic steroids. Later, Lori and her friend Annie go off to babysit two kids who conveniently live right across from each other. And Michael continues to stalk them. Don't worry, he only kills people that are immoral. His sister played patty cake out of wedlock. I'm sure that trucker was up to no good. He would never hurt an innocent animal. Never mind. So after Annie gets a hot date that night, she drops off her kid at Lori's, goes in her car, and... I like this scene because it actually betrays the real eye motions that occur when you die. First you go cross-eyed, then your eyes close, then they reopen, still cross-eyed. Back at Michael's old house, Dr. Loomis and a cop see what they can find, but with no luck. You must think me a very sinister doctor. <laughs> I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. So his pupils were dilated? I watched him for 15 years, sitting in a room, staring at a wall, not seeing the wall, looking past the wall. Don't forget listening to the wall. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. So thinking that Annie is still babysitting, two lovebirds waltz in the house and make themselves comfortable. Go get me a beer. I thought you were going to get me one. Yeah. <laughs> Come on out. Okay, very nice, very scary, but do you realize we can see more blood in some Disney movies than in this movie? Oh, that's good. So Michael goes upstairs dressed up as Casper the Four-Eyed Ghost. Finally. Hello? <laughs> Annie, are you all right? <sighs> so concerned about what she heard, Lori goes across the street to see what's going on. You know, for a tasteless psychopath, he's a very tasteful decorator. And he's mastered mechanics as well. I swear, if he gets this whole murdering thing out of his system, he could have a bright future ahead of him. Uh, maybe you should put the glasses back on. There, there's a street that you could be running down. Your house is like a couple blocks away, right? Tommy, please! Tommy, hurry up! Oh, smart, yeah. Show them where the children are. Tommy, please! Please! Tommy, get upstairs. What is it? Tommy, get upstairs, get Lindsay locked in the bedroom door. Do as I say! Now, I'm no mathematical engineer, but if a doorknob is on your right side while facing the front of a house, shouldn't the doorknob be on the left side if you're on the inside of the house? Not even close. Seriously, Michael, once you're done killing everyone, it's time to update your contact lens prescription. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Ow. I'm scared. There's nothing to be scared of. Are you sure? How? I can't 
killed him. Well, you certainly know how to sensibly translate yourself when you're talking to children. Hey, you can't kill the boogeyman. Ah! 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 Now lock the door! Talk about female defense. Michael has a knife, but yet she stabbed him with a knitting needle and now a hanger. What's next, a tampon? So that was supposed to be the end of the movie, and the end of Michael Myers. But by mistake, the guy playing Michael Myers got up before the scene was over. Ugh, oh, another scene down. Oh crap, we're still filming. So Dr. Loomis spots the stolen car from three frickin' blocks away and ends up walking by just as the kids come out of the house screaming. Apparently he went temporarily deaf when Lori was doing the same exact thing a couple minutes ago. <laughs> Uh, I think you missed a pronoun. What's the boogeyman? No, no, was that the boogeyman? What's the boogeyman? Try, was he the boogeyman? What's the boogeyman? Whatever. As a matter of fact, it was. But Michael somehow lived through all of that. You only live twice, Mr. Bond. And that is Halloween, one of my favorite horror movies. John Carpenter, the director, definitely proved in his later movies that he could be bloody, gory, and gross. But this movie only featured about a shot glass worth of blood. So what does this movie have? Suspense. Something that the sequels and especially the remake lacked. But we'll get to those later. The scariest scenes don't come from Michael jumping out at you or him stabbing someone. They come from seeing his silhouette or his faint reflection, which to me is much scarier. Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie is also a big part of why this movie works so well. She's not just some model that they put glasses on so she'd appear smart. That's what they did in the remake. This Lori is very believable, very likable, and keeps the movie grounded. What's the boogeyman? So as you can see, there wasn't too much in this movie I could make fun of. I just had to go through this movie so I could eventually get to the sequels, which are, to put it nicely, not as good as this one. So if you're looking for a scary movie that emphasizes suspense and characters over blood and guts, definitely check this movie out. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy Halloween. Thank you.